Yow, 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 yow. How y'all doing on the fuck tonight, man? Everybody's okay? For sure. You know what I'm saying? You good? For sure. I don't know. I don't see you. You good? Yo, baby, this is boring as hell. Yo, 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 DJ. Hit me. These are non-sponsors. <laughs> so there's no other people. But they're from Jersey. Now, we know Victor McGinnis from Jersey. Yeah, they're from Jersey. 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 It's your boy Boogie, getting money that's more than likely. My name is Barn Brown, we're in the Cutlass Podcast, they call me Breeze. And this is OTS Podcast, make some noise like Nordy. Yo, 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 and we are here, we are live, and we are direct, you know what I'm saying? What the fuck is going on? I had to hit him on him. But, um, we in this motherfucker. Right? Yeah, how you, how you OTS. I'm great. I'm great. We ain't worried about me. How you doing? Well, we, we got, got the guest in here, Beat Bruiser. Big Beat Bruiser. I'm saying, I'm saying. How y'all doing? What's going on, man? What's going on, man? What's going on, man? What's going on, man? slapping always matters. You All get right, smacked right. a little different some different days, you feel me? Yeah. So we good money. How you doing, though? We got the guest. You said Beat Bruiser. You know what I'm beat saying? Bruiser. So. I mean, are we getting into, how do you want to present this episode to our guests? First I mean, of all, shout out to our, hold on, how do you want to First of all, shout out to everybody who show love to OCS. Shout out to everybody who show love to Jesus. Shout out to everybody. Love, good energy, positivity is in the atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? I got these headphones on because I'm watching this intense playoff game. We're going to be watching football. You might hear me say, oh shit, oh damn, but I'm tuned in. We're going to get this motherfucking shit it's done. It's all good. We're going to rock baby. You got to get that ticket rocking. You know? <laughs> yeah. Money, money. money. <laughs> yeah, they may not. Yeah. I yeah. hope they do, man. Money, shit. Money. I need my mumblies. <laughs> uh, I kind of want to see someone new in the Super Bowl this year. Hmm. It still can happen. Wait. Who the fuck are they going to play? They're going to play uh, the Bengals. Damn. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like, damn. Yeah, you right. <laughs> Fucking, uh, shit, how was your weekend, bro? So far. Weekend so far. I mean, this shit did. basically over, but yeah, about what you do? I did this weekend. What you do this week? I, work, I worked on Saturday. I made a little couple of dollars, you feel me? Just from trying to get a couple of dollars, you know, more streams of income, more I feel good again. I didn't feel good for, like, at least a month, and I didn't recognize it until my grandma said, look, you miserable fuck, go get your life together. <laughs> but not so much in that sense. She said it like, you walk around like you just so, and I, you know, one day I just woke up and I realized like my actions and my deeds really proved that. You feel me? So you miserable you know, fuck. Yeah, yeah, bitch. <laughs> Smile, bitch. It ain't that bad. Fuck you feel me? Fuck yeah. So I, I had to tip back into myself. You feel me? So now I'm good. I feel good. We're gonna do great shit this whole year. We're gonna get money this whole year. Our family's gonna pop. Hey, this podcast is back, nigga. This three uh, weeks in a row, baby. Now nah, we never left. Uh, we ain't back. We've been doing this shit for a long time. We're gonna never go back. You know what I'm saying? Niggas got real life shit going on, but we got the homie Beat Bruiser in here, man. We beating up beats and shit, bruises shit. You know what I'm saying? How was your week so far, bro? What, what you had going on this week? I worked, unfortunately. You work? Yeah, I kind of I kind of hate that because, you know, it takes away so much time from the production. Right, right, right. For sure. I got so much stuff I won't put out. Right. And you just always got to fucking give your soul to that shit. I'll be feeling the theme fucking way. When you off, you still got, like, stuff to do that you didn't do the other week. So, when well, you're day off, you still doing shit. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you see it, right. See, yeah. I... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, they told me being an adult was just terrible. I was yeah, shit. Yeah, grew up so ass, my nigga. <laughs> yeah, this shit is stupid ass. Shit, matter of fact, I, speaking of, like, I was feeling the same shit, bro. Like, my boss was just sitting there talking to me like, yeah, we got this going for the company and you guys are going to do that. Uh, uh, I just wanted to stop like, bro, I don't fucking care. I'm just here to get my fucking paycheck. Like, <laughs> like the shit is just like. You're talking to me so passionately, but I'm just. <laughs> like, I was ready to leave when I talked to Right. Like, like, nigga, <laughs> if I didn't need this money, I would not be here. I don't give a fuck about, like, what the fuck is going on here. Like, yeah, we're going to have some great things. So, going on. I have a question for all of us. I'm, you know, niggas be in the same predicament. So I'm just, you know, you deal with certain shit you don't want to deal with. Right. What do you think could have changed your, per- your, your shit as a creative? Because we all older, we're yeah. all adults. What do you think you could say to a kid who, you know what I'm saying, 
know he's creative, mm -hmm. want to be creative, mm -hmm. got to work. Instead of just feeling like you got to work, what would you say to that creative kid to be like, this is the light at the end of the tunnel, though? Because obviously we didn't see it. It took us a long time to see it. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a 20-year-old person, you want to be like, yo, bro, this is the only, like, you work. You do what you got to do. You track. You do whatever you got to do. You rob. Whatever you got to do to get money. Right. You got to get money. Mm -hmm. But you feel this artistry in your heart. Do it. But what would you What would you say that, to be like, you got to do that, but you got to remain an artist? Well, I would say to a young person, especially before you got kids and responsibilities, like, bro, do this shit now. Go hard as fucking possible. Because, like, right now, nigga, I got kids. I got bills, I got a fucking, I gotta make sure there's food in the house, I gotta make sure my bills paid, I gotta go to work, two jobs, do this, do that, and then when I was 20 years old, if I was on my shit like I was supposed to be, with no kids and none of that shit going on, I'll be gone by now, like nigga, you can't do this shit, the younger you are, the harder you should be going, like with the more free time you got, bro, do that shit the hardest while you got that free time, bro. And I own even that. Like, Before it's you when you're young, like eighteen years, you're surrounded about by a, a bigger population on a daily basis, so it's easier to create like a fan base or mm -hmm. a cult following or something like mm -hmm. that. Like if I would have did this earlier on in high school, I think shit would be picking up a lot yeah. because you already have a, like a base fan base, you know. Mm -hmm. and, of course. Then, yeah, of course, you know. But that's the saying. It's like I think it's either. Life is wasted on the youth, or knowledge is wasted on the youth. Because when you're young and you got all the freedoms, you don't know it. You're not even thinking you about know, it. You don't know the freedom you got yeah. until you fucking basically give it away by fucking, you know what I'm saying? But taking up responsibilities. That depends on multiple things. It comes from one depend on the simple is the person, like the person the kid is. Yeah. You know, like 16, yeah. you're still kind of trying to discover yourself. Yeah. You've been through some shit, especially living in the inner cities and mm -hmm. shit like that. If you've been through some shit, you're not going to be. Yeah, that's productive, or you feel me? That's just my opinion. On it. Yeah, you but you still don't know as far as what? Uh, you said as productive. That was what you just as far as you said. You're from the inner city, and you're young. You won't be as productive. What? Like, elaborate on that a little bit. Productive. Like, all right. So you got to ask you. We got to yes. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. You ain't saying you about to answer like you said it, nigga. What I mean by productive is. You have a lot, like what you said, you have a lot more time. So the way you spend your time, if you spend it productively, it, it'd be, a, it, the production on it would be at a higher mm -hmm. rate to whereas you got to factor it in now because you have an adult and you, you have like to work and like you said, if you have kids, you have to factor everything in and then when you can fit it in, you can fit it in. Mm -hmm. As opposed to just giving it all you got. Exactly, when you have all the time in the world as a kid. 100%, 100%. But you don't do that, though. You no, you can don't know until it happened. Like, damn, I could have been doing all That's this why shit. I just want to tell the young no, people to I listen. Go I, got a, I got a <laughs> seven-year-old son. If the only thing I can teach this nigga is to listen, but as much as I know he don't want to, I'll be okay. Because if you just listen, bro. That's the thing about kids, nigga. Your parents said the same shit to you. I know. I know. I know. Just listen. I know. If you just hear me. I know my, I can hear it in my grandma's speech when she talked to me now at 31. It's like, damn, nigga. If you'd have listened when you were 16, nigga, we'd be in a different there's, predicament. There's plenty of times where I did something. I can already hear my mom from like the house saying, <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I know, no. just listen. Let me know. Yeah. Like, my son is like, my son is 12, bro. I'll be wanting to choke this nigga like Bart Simpson. Like, bro, just listen to me. It's all right here. Just listen. <laughs> but, you see, you've been 12 before. You gotta, that's, yeah, that's, you gotta, that's what I always related back to. I've been. The best way to learn is the hard way, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what life teaches. That's what life teaches. But yeah, man, other than that, man, we ain't here. We got the, the homie Beat Bruiser in the building. And. Shit, me, I didn't get to what I did this weekend. Nigga, I was outside, man. Shout out to homie Craigman. Shout out to homie motherfucker Leggy Banger. Shout out to homie Fifth Stone. You know what I'm saying? I was at that show last night. Niggas rock that shit. Much you know love, saying? much respect. Yeah, the beat battle. Niggas was performing. It was a nice. The self jerseys. Who was who, was who in that bitch? Everybody was in that motherfucker. Yeah, it was one of them things. It was one of them things. That was the king, too. Uh, shit. I mean, yeah, they, they, them niggas need better promo. Yeah, 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 you got it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my event. I just showed up because Matt yeah, niggas told me about it. I know shit be happening like that. I know it be happening in little spots, you know. 
Yeah, yeah, little, yeah. Little, little, yeah. Oh, in 2022, we outside too. With all, yeah, yeah, we, we outside. We gotta get outside. All of the No, 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 no. We got to come outside. OTS got to come outside. We definitely. That's what. This. That's where shit started. Was the yeah, events. Yeah, yeah. We gotta bring the events back. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just be scared of rap events. That was really where the podcast came from. Huh? Yeah, 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 for real. What if y'all went live after the event? We did. We did. We did. That's we did how that shit, too. That's <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But um. It was lit, you know what I'm saying? And my little brother, Sal T. Lamar, he had an event. So I was at that joint on Friday. Then I was at another event on Saturday. I was just outside repping the brand, you know what I'm saying? Doing how to do. Shout shout out hands Jersey. To the babies. You know, that's what the shit you got to do in this game. And um, shout out South Jersey. It's still a real, real, real. South Jersey is going to do, do some big things in 22. Shout you know out South Jersey, North Jersey, yeah, Central, Central Jersey. Jersey. South Jersey. Shout out motherfucking hey man, Jersey. Shit, shit, shout out motherfucking shout Philly, out you know what I'm saying? Philly. Philly. Well, you ain't from Philly, but you over there. The Tri-State. The Tri-State. Yeah, Tri-State. yeah, I know. Uh, I'm saying you just over there, so you got to play the shit. Shout out North School. Shout out 1002. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? saying? We, we out here. We out here. But it was real colorful, you know what I'm saying? Everybody outside, everybody doing their thing. Did a lot of niggas doing their thing last night, bro. All right, so you know we got to we got to you know what I'm saying how everybody's weeks was going. We elaborated, we spoke. So usually when we get into the show a little bit, we like talk about current events and you know my goddamn fake narrative. You see, he's going through his notes because this is his time. Yeah, I'm trying to get it. <laughs> I mean, shit, you I'm want to start, I can I'm kick this shit off. I'm I'm try- I know you is. You is gonna get it because this shit is shit. You like yeah. this is current events. <laughs> current events. Nigga, I was fucking no trailers. So I like to talk about the boys in me. How we doing? I want you want to talk about the cur- So, what's going on? What's man? going on, nigga? Man, what's going on? Trying to make painful too. It sounded stupid at first, so I saw the video when the nigga was explaining it. I was like, it sounds good, but nigga, you better make sure you got that right word behind. What was his? Get with Kanye. What was his explanation? So he gonna do painful too, mm-hmm. right? He gonna mm-hmm. do it from where they had all them bricks. What the fuck was it? Like, how many bricks? At the end of the pool, what do you got? Like, 10 bricks? 13. Uh, 13 bricks right you, you put thir- like Yeah, that. you put like 13 bricks yeah, in the hood. Like so he gonna go from what happened to them 13 bricks. He was like, he was a young boy. So Dame Dash really from Harlem in the 80s and shit. So he was there. He said he fucked up 10 bands on that shit. That shit, niggas, whatever, whatever. He gonna he have that in the movie. Boy. Yeah, that's what, it's basically about what happened to the, the fucking 13 bricks. Fucking uh, the dope boys, they had flipped some shit and moved around. It's basically gonna be the spinoff. But I'm my whole thing is like, bro, just don't call it paying fool too. You can have the same story. You can even say them bricks is from the shit, from the situation. You don't gotta call it that because I feel like I feel like when you name some shit like that, it's like when they did Belly Two. Y'all ever seen Belly Two? Ah, I don't see Belly Two now. Bridge is fucking. Dumb, because it has nothing to do with Belly 1. Like, why y'all name it Belly 2? But you can't compare that to dope. You can't compare well, that. Well, I'm saying, like, what's I can what's compare saying? exactly what you're talking about to How High 2. Yeah, like, like what the fuck did I do with How High 1? Y'all, y'all, name that y'all had else. Lil Yachty, who don't even smoke in a smoker's movie. Y'all long. can't say that about what he's saying, though, because he's saying you saying that everything from Pay the Four is going to come into Pay the Four 2. It's like it's from the third. Like, but don't it, it was it's not gonna But they never mission, talked though. about they never talked about um the I, here's, here's a better question. But I'm just saying How they never are they gonna about. continue that story? It, it's it's the bricks, so it said it's gonna be about it's many ways. It's, it's gonna be about the niggas that got the, the thirteen bricks. It's gonna be about the other drug dealers, not uh Richard Ooh. Porter and Alpha it's, and them niggas. Because them niggas go to jail. But, but how modern is it gonna be? No, nah, it's gonna be in like eighty seven. So it's gonna be like sure. from that same time period, it's gonna keep continuing. But what I'm saying is like nigga, just call it something else because you gonna put mad pressure on yourself by calling it paid full too. Paid full too is a class I mean, paid full is a classic. Cult classic. And hip-hop, like bro hip-hop's like stuff. But they don't get it fucked up to think that if you would just if a motherfucker told you, yo, alright, we got paid in full. But if you keep watching for another hour or two, we got another paid and fool. I'm willing to I'm willing to risk it because they came out with paid and fool. Niggas ain't think paid and fool was gonna do what it was gonna do and be what it was. Yeah. That wasn't supposed to be no cult. Bro, that's a classic. That's movie. a classic classic. Bro, that's a that's a classic. legendary That's like on some Jews Friday. Friday, yeah. all that shit. Yeah. yeah, bro, it was one of them. So yeah. like when they made Friday two, it was more you know, in tune nice because it was, I think the Friday no, series is decent though. No, it's the, might be one of the best series ever because they kept it in tune with what was going. They didn't. They took years off, but when they got back to it, they didn't miss a beat. You feel me? Yeah. I feel like Pay the Fool can do that. 
I feel like if they get the right people and the yeah, right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, nigga, you better put some money behind this shit or have the right. If people you with the niggas, yeah, for paid in full too, for it to be paid in full. The streets like Lil Meech. The streets like uh, yeah. the, the other they whoever the streets like from think, the the. Yeah, I not think it's like some of the old cast. Yeah, in the movie, then they gotta make it real. Like, we gotta they make gotta, it like a real they gotta movie. Make it like the story. I don't believe that they're capable. Of that. That. I don't believe he's capable of that. Yeah, he is capable. I mean, I'm just capable. saying, make sure you do that, bro. Like, don't have it on like some YouTube movie shit. Yeah, like, like you don't have his own movies be like on Belly YouTube. Too. Yeah. yeah, or the little BET movies. Like, bro, you gotta have this shit. Like, it don't have shit to do with the real movie, but it's called too. Yeah, right. Yeah, don't do that shit, bro. No, if you I don't, don't do that, do just it. call it something else. You can even have the same storyline, just change the name, bro. I, I don't think Dame would do it. Like I don't think Dame would do the culture like that. I got, I got a little bit more respect on Dame. But that's what's cooking up in these streets. Also, what's cooking up in these streets? Kanye in his fucking boots, my nigga. This nigga got the fucking Whopper stompers on. The uh, niggas keep I'm giving him sneakers, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, hello. No, I fuck with yeah. I'm a Yay fan. He, he had lost me a little bit with Trump. But everybody keep giving him these sneakers, and he just looking at these shits like, bro, I don't want them. Fucking Khaled just gave him some exclusive drawers that is only 100 pair of. This nigga just looked at the shit like, oh, thank you. If you were with Kim that long, though, would you want to hang around her all the time? I would go hang out with Trump. (laughs) If I'm Kanye West, why would I be with Kim? Why would I want to? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so I don't even got it. I'm not going to go get no. I, mean, I ain't a billionaire, so I don't know nothing about that. But all I'm talking about is these Snickers. The fuck billionaire shit. Fuck billionaire shit. That's where we get it fucked up. You know what I mean? The money, mm-hmm. the money is great. You know, mm-hmm. but we all humans at the end of the day. We all came. Kanye from Chicago, nigga. So that's the hood. He, if he grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, he knew what a hood was. Yeah. You feel me? So a nigga that's growing up, going to school around hood and regular people. You're not gonna go be with the bitch who had a sex tape. Why? Cause I got money at school. I mean, Kanye I, moved to China when he was like 12. I, didn't, I don't know Kanye's life. See, you see, I, I, well, that's, <laughs> I'm a journalist. That's news to me. That's news to me. I'm a journalist, <laughs> nigga. But nah, he, yeah. Kanye a different nigga. But I'm just saying. I'm not gonna be with Kim Kardashian in no circumstances if she's sucking dick on camera. And that's not her fault. You didn't get, you didn't do nothing to deserve that. <laughs> it's not, I'm not even gonna hold it against you. You yeah. feel me? Like, but as far as being a wife to my, like, you got, you, you probably got great children and all that shit, but look at what you're going through. You got to find out where your daughter's having a party at and pull up because of Travis Scott. You thought that wasn't going to happen as soon as you got her pregnant? You didn't know that was going to happen? Nah, that was only because Kanye was wild. He wasn't supposed to say Kanye was wild enough. Fuck who he was supposed to say. Your baby mom ain't supposed to be doing that. I don't even blame blame Trav. You, you, you got to have your baby. Nah, bro. Come on, man. Backstory, backstory, backstory. The day before that, the day we said he was gonna fuck up the nigga. What's the nigga? Oh, she talking about Pete oh, Davidson when, when he dropped easy. Yeah, he dropped that, and the next day it was his daughter's birthday, and they didn't want him to come because they didn't want him to fight. Well, Pete he should have been able to. He still came. Pete That's Davidson Travis didn't get Scott, beat up. Travis Scott told him where's that. Did Pete Davidson get beat up? And Kim Kardashian and them left. They weird. That's some. You I mean, only know that because I'm a journalist. <laughs> they want to know what's about what? Left, I'm not a left the baby. I'm not. They ain't leave, but they probably went in the house or some shit while he was there. And they, they, they didn't. They didn't interrupt. Man, according to TMZ, fuck all that. Mm-hmm. As a nigga from the hood, you is not allowing certain shit to go. I'm all not. Right, all right, put this you on. Go put this on. All right, all right, all right. I'm just asking you this. You know niggas that's geniuses, probably in the hood or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You would go with Kim Kardashian? Me? You. After everything you knew. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yes or no? No, no. <laughs> would you? But it's different. Them niggas just. I didn't ask you. You said no. Would you? Yes or no? <laughs> Hell no. Nigga, what, in, what are we talking about? Uh, what I'm talking about is I'm putting it in the shoes of a regular nigga. All right. So if, That's the perspective. If your baby mom is fucking with a nigga. And then you made a song about beating him the fuck up. And then the you next win. day is Isaac's birthday. And is they, you think you go, you think she gonna let you come to the party? No. Fuck. That's them. what happened. They just famous. Mm. <laughs> they just famous as fuck. Yeah, but so what? I'm still pulling up to the party just like Kanye. That's why I'm not sitting up here acting like I'm shitting on Kanye. What I'm saying is, when you're Kanye West, when he was Kanye West, you don't fuck with a Kim Kardashian. I mean, he likes fame, bro. You're not a fame ass nigga. You don't want. You're not on a thirst for fame. These niggas is in a thirst for fame. 
So what do you do? You get the most fame, fucking thirst ass, like they from like, the family. Yeah, you go to the fame, thirsty ass fame family. I get it. This is what Kanye. This is what he want, bro. But and he did it, and he made himself a big a business move. Yeah, yeah, probably, probably, probably. Like, but look at you now. First Billy. Yeah, he's smiling. Yeah, he's like, nigga. Let's, let's, let's the just, dudes can't get hurt too much if you let's just Billy. acknowledge that. Kanye is smiling. Kanye is one of the greatest artists ever. He's one of the richest men ever. He's one of the smartest men ever. He's one of the most fashionably inclined men ever. That nigga's not a happy person. He don't wake up every day. I'm not saying shit. I, don't, I can tell from his actions. You ever been happy before? If you've ever been a happy person, I would be happy if niggas follow me around with cameras all day. That's what I'm saying, bro. He can't be a happy person. He's not. It's... I mean, it hasn't been as. I mean, if you. I've, I respect everything about Kanye. Did you see the, did you see the Nori podcast he was on? Yes, I did. Yeah. Like, it's not like people be. I mean. I respect everything. How can you not respect Kanye? Boy? Once you get to a certain level, people just try to be respectful as possible. Yeah. And you up with Billy, but you on a different. Different, different time. Super, I, I couldn't even be able to relate like, to that. Listen, this shit I'm saying is completely. Listen. You can cry, bro. The nigga couldn't just fucking don't talk type shit and then do me like out. this and then do me in this podcast just like this with one motion. Don't think I don't know that. I get yeah. that. But what I'm saying is, his actions, bro. Actions are a very true telling thing of what you are, what you're gonna be, what you do and shit. How you navigate, how you react. And shit like that shit means something, bro. But either way, Kanye and Kim need to get it together. But that's not even the point. We no, in here with the homie point. Beat Bruiser. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Fresh off that new single. What was it Dark Bop? Dark Bop. Yes, yeah, sir. Dark Bop. That thing hit. That thing hit. And uh, shit. Let's get into it. Let me the interview get portion. Into all right, all right, all right. Okay, so let's, let's let's talk to Beat Bruiser a little bit. Okay, so yeah. first and foremost, where you from? New Orleans, Louisiana, born 504. Oh, you, you, oh, you from down bottom. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Um, what has that taught you? Being a, how long you been in Jersey for? So you, been in, you just out here visiting? You no, know, uh, we moved to Jersey around like 2000. Okay. And then we moved to Philly, and then to Delaware, and then I moved to Philly. I live with my girlfriend. Okay. So you've been from New Orleans? I've Philly. been in the tri-state area. Yeah. Okay. From New Orleans okay. To the tri-state area. Got you. Got you. Got you. So, you're an artist, you know what I'm saying? You just was talking about the single. What has, what has that done for your musical trend? Has it been a transition? Have you been staying true to what you know? What is that? What has this melting pot of places done for your uh, creative process? Um, it's been an adjustment, to be honest. Just, um, that's actually a good question. Just, just learning how to, like, schedule your days out. You know, like I was talking about before the show, the adulting part, mm-hmm. and then trying to work in the time to actually do it. Like that's why, I, you know, if I was younger, I felt like it had been on a more accelerated process. Mm-hmm. But I do, I do, I do like love the time that I spent, like actually preparing and researching on doing the business before actually doing a song. Because mm-hmm. before I was just doing beats. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So when I got into actually wanted to go into business and actually take it serious, mm-hmm. that's what made me want to dive like more into all right. So if I'm gonna go into business. What am I gonna like? What am I gonna encounter? Mm-hmm. Like what are release drops? Like what are this? What is that? What is that? What is like to drop music? Mm-hmm. I start researching how other people drop their music. So you're a rapper and slash producer. I want to combine the two into like its own class. That's why I dropped mm-hmm. EPs and I dropped songs mm-hmm. when it's just beats. Okay. And so how long have you really been like on that level of taking it serious? For about a year and a half. Okay, year. that's good. So you fresh, you fresh out. You already made it over to the OTS podcast, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> big league, big league. <laughs> but nah, nah, uh, nah, so what do you, I guess so equally, you, you treat them equally. You're going to keep going with producing and rapping as like the same thing, or do you feel like you want to take I kind of want to take more of, I do want to do them both, but I also want to kind of take them both. 
TJ Khaled and Michael made it type, type bro. Okay. So I was still like, I was like, when I dropped beats, it'll still be my song, mm -hmm. other people feature. Of course, I do beats for other people, mm -hmm. they can own it or whatever. But I still want to be able to feel, have that tag, other features, and then, I mean, they're, everyone gets their shares. Like, you want to get your shares of a song or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just, you feel me? Just having the recognition. Because my ultimate goal when it comes to music is I want my music to live longer than I do. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to portray my story for others to see and listen to, even when I'm not there to listen to tell them the story. Okay. So I, like I, like, I, I like that. I like that. I, I like that. I like that. I like that right there. I like that, that synopsis, right? So, you know, do you feel like the music that you provide is a is a way for these people nowadays because it's a different climate. You know, how do you how do you feel about me? Twenty six. Okay. Okay. So you right in the mix. Do you feel like whatever you provide musically is enough to keep a uh maybe a a sixteen or fifteen year old occupied in your music? Um, and do you and does that matter to you? Of course it does, because the youth is the future. Right. I mean a lot of the newer, better I know the newer, hotter rappers are coming out in their teenage years, you feel me? So, the youth is, I, f I feel like the youth is the most important thing coming in right now. You feel me? Oh. If the youth doesn't strive, then the earth dies. For sure. Thousand percent. So, you being a rapper producer, like, what gave you, like, the inspiration to even try to take on that task of being a, a rapper producer? No like, you buy my beats? <laughs> I know <laughs> the same shit. Nobody was buying them hoes. Them shit's hard though. Yeah, it's hard to promote it because it's such a it's such a an inflated industry. Everyone, and niggas every other person shit. down the street is doing it. And niggas want free shit. I ain't hearing that shit from y'all niggas. No free beats. I'm gonna tell y'all like I learned that early on, no free beats. Yeah, no. No. No, no y'all niggas don't never want a paper beat. That's though. cool. No. That's the, yeah. But it's it's at least one motherfucker who you can, you know. You can meet a motherfucker and be like, I got these beats, you got these bars. What you gonna pay me? What we gonna pay each other? Or we can do a 50-50. You know what I'm saying? Your ass should be making beats. And I'm not gonna let you off the hook on that shit, nigga. Mm -hmm. For 2022. That's my new humbug, nigga. <laughs> you know what I mean? You gotta come, you got you got space, you mm -hmm. got creativity. Nigga, you a beat maker. You, you know what I mean? Bro, I do everything, bro. I rap make beats. I'm gonna hear some. I met this nigga as a beat maker and he turned himself into I heard him freestyle one time <laughs> at a house. Now. Yeah, now I'm a joint I heard him freestyle one time at a <laughs> house. Many talent. <laughs> That's when me and his cousin used to freestyle and rap all the time. We just bullshit, you know. Then he tried to freestyle. But then I heard a, some shit from him and it was like, oh, wait, nigga. You really know how to rap? <laughs> what the fuck you out here doing? And then he was making this beat. So it's just like, my, my point in that is what I'm saying is that production is needed. Don't ever feel like. It's not needed, bro. That shit needed. And if yeah. you get with a dope enough motherfucker or a fly enough motherfucker, you'll find that vibe again, whether you yeah. like it or not. Yeah. You'll know what the post is because people will react. Yeah. And as long as you get the reactions, you will fucking know. So you gotta. Yeah, get... but when you're as antisocial as I am. Yeah, that shit. That you speaking from an introvert, so I know it. Yeah. But what I know is 2022 won't be the that won't be the death of me. That's been the death. I feel like, like shit. I feel like outside, the fact that I'm not like antisocial is like kind of the hardest part about marketing music as a mm -hmm. person. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. It is. It's very is. Because you get tired of shaking hands and kissing babies. And that's what I've been doing all weekend. And that shit's exhausting. But <laughs> I think you better work out to be able to get through it if you want to get to where you go. That's what I learned. Because in this shit, bro, this shit, we're going to have to Steve, do a... Steve um, Harvey said, uh, millionaires don't sleep eight hours a night. Man, mm -hmm. how can you? How can you? They don't sleep four. Probably how can you? Yeah, take a two hour nap. How can you, bro? You got to kiss the babies and shake the hands. But shit, this is about the homie Beat Bruiser. He in the motherfucking building. So Beat Bruiser. What's your origin story, bro? Like, if you was a Marvel hero, what what was the first day you picked up the motherfucking mic or the, the beat machine? The first beat I made, I was 16 years old. Okay. I was 16. I picked up a little beat. What was you uh, making beats on when you first started? I made it on my iPhone. I made a beat on the iPhone. It was just This, it wasn't even GarageBand. I just made it. This I shit is crazy. It was dope. 
because I'm old as fuck. So <laughs> it was old. my first time picking it up too. It was, I was like, oh, I could probably. I, could, I think I'll like the nigga. first time I'm gonna beat the other nigga. Yeah, beats on a PlayStation One. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm old as shit. But then, said, I ball. then again, <laughs> when I was younger, football was my focus. Yeah, um, really good football. I wouldn't say. So did you find music and football at the same time or was it like I played football from like I was five, four. Okay. I was playing football earlier, so it was kind of a thing. So what was the parallel? Did you find any parallel, if at all, any, when you came from, you know, playing football as a team as to I found that out I found that music. parallel very early on as a kid. Music and football were just intertwined so closely. Like going away to the football games, my dad would just bump music, like just, just to hype us up. And that's what football players do. Mm-hmm. So music is so intertwined with that and even at the football games they play. My bad. That's all good. Same player, fuck up. <laughs> but uh, your music, your music is real bass heavy, bro. Where I'm fucking with like, yeah, you fuck with the 808. I love trouble. Yeah, yeah. I love and the I, trouble. I, I was listening to your shit before you came in, and it's like a lot of motherfucking real bass heavy. You got that down south trap vibe. You know what I'm saying? I try to blend the down south. I try to blend the southern bass with the eastern vibe. Okay. Right. And but the also I'm still trying to bring like my personality into the music. So mm-hmm. if you know me, like I'm pretty much of a quiet person. I don't really say much unless I'm having fun somebody. I'm very quiet. So right. Shit I've been through, you know. Yeah. It's pretty, you know, that's why I really reflect to the lo fi sound. I really love like if you hear like underwater type. Right, type. underwater shit. Yeah, yeah. Trunk rattling. Yeah, mm-hmm. trunk rattling. Nice shit, yeah. melody. Heavy ass, like heavy ass fucking 808 bass shit. But like, I, I think early on, my earliest issue was uh, actually mixing the songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, early on, some of the songs mixing was pretty. Do you uh, record yourself? Like, yeah, you know how you mix and you know how to do that? Yeah, I just recently, like, started getting more into mixing. That's what took me so long to drop a uh, dark vibe. Okay. So, are you like a Fruity Loops guy or like I a MPC FL. guy? I use FL. FL? FL, uh, okay. FL, FL is very simplistic. Yeah, simplicity is key. Uh, That's another thing with my beats. If if you hear every the way it, what really got me into beats as a kid is just the tabletop stuff, mm-hmm. people knocking. Mm-hmm. I'm a sucker for a good boom bat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everyone is anything that gets you. I'm cheating. You listen to Snow Allegra. Uh, what's it called? What's it called? On my mind. That the, the simple the Freddie Gibbs gang bet game like this. Just the simple. No, my my favorite um, recent build up to a song like my favorite like intro to a song has mm-hmm. to be the end. Shot of flow. Uh, it's like perfect. Like four of them shits, right? No, the first one, the, the intro, like the first 15 seconds was just perfect for that song. I got and it. Kept, I it set the energy. The boom. Mm-hmm. And then, mm. Right, right. You but made the vibe. Even you. with that, like yeah. you said, when you started with the, you started, you bet you was a banging on tables ass nigga. Mm-hmm. So. Well, that, I wasn't. I hear a lot. Yeah. And the people around me would do it. And then just watching people. The older they get, the better they got. I was just I do that to those those son. tones. Yeah, those tones just stick in my head. Like my son, my 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 seven or my seven month year old. I just be hitting him with beats all day. Like you just said, seven month year old. Okay, seven month, whatever. Fuck, I'm fucked up. This off shit podcast. We do drugs and motherfuckers get fucked up. But, <laughs> so you gotta talk shit when you do drugs and get fucked up. You gotta have somebody to talk shit. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I mean, but you gotta continue. Yeah, my continue. seven, my seven month old. Like, I'd just be hitting him with beats and shit all day, and then you'd be like, he be feeling it. Yeah, because you know what's like, up. Yeah, bro, you feel that shit. He's like, nah, my, my nephew Caleb, mm-hmm. shout out to my nephew Caleb, he just had a birthday. Mm-hmm. He would listen to, uh, he used to be around 24 7, so mm-hmm. he used to listen to whatever I was listening to. Right. It was one time I was in a room, I was playing Antidote Travis Scott. He started reciting <laughs> lyrics. He looked crazy, right? He was like two, three. 
Don't you want pay nothing? I'm looking like Yeah. It's crazy, crazy how girls catch on to so much stuff fast. Like no, he learned, how to, he he learned how to play the video game. I think I two, think growing up in pick our, up and play a video game at the age of two. Like, I think about I think about growing up in our generation. I think that we we look at kids as how they supposed to be treated. And for us, that's some abnormal shit. Right. And what I mean by that is like, you know, your kid can have a rough day at school because he didn't get to go to sleep because he got picked up late from somewhere he had to be babysit at. Yeah. That he shouldn't be there and he should be in his bed at the end of the night. Mm-hmm. So when he go to school with an attitude, it's damn, the teacher's just talking about you again. And now you get cussed out. Now you gotta go get a beating and go through the same shit the next day. As opposed to, I don't think my generation carries shit like that. Like, no, I, you no, know no. what I mean? Like, and these kids is different. You can't even treat them like how we got treated. I just, I just feel like you society's know society's changed since. Yeah, then. it's yeah. a whole different. You can't treat kids like how we got treated, bro. I just tell my kids, everyone, everyone has, a, everyone's a detective now. Beat your ass. You know what I mean? You be want to? No, fuck that. You really be want to? No, no, no. Everyone's a detective. No, no, no. This nigga turned detective. No, we're, we're motherfuckers, how you fucked up, like, yeah, 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 you fucked up, yeah. beat the fuck, yo, stop playing, you lucky you don't got it how I had it, bitch, right. I'd have been slung under tables before, right, bitch, right. I'm tough because of my parents, <laughs> yeah. you want to be tough, nigga, yeah, so, yeah. don't, yeah, go ahead, that go ahead. My chest at you mm-hmm. so, yo, I know. but, yeah, you know, yeah. all I'm saying from that is that, you know, that's normal behavior, though, because children are people, you feel me, like, you ain't got to, yeah. Just because a motherfucker don't agree with you, just because they're a little bit younger they're than They're little people, people bro. They, you little humans, bro. You don't need to beat them off. You don't need to fuck them up. You ain't got you to. You want to, but you don't need to. You don't need to. Talk to your kids. You man. got to, bro. You got to. Speak to your children and make sure they're respectful, too. Shit, bro. So, what are your top, like, like your top five producers or rappers in the game that you fuck with? Like who do you fuck with right now? Like where you get what's your where your ear at right now? What you want? So I can tell you my influences. I can tell you my top five in, influences as a producer. Uh-huh. And then I'm gonna tell you my top five okay. right now, like the last twenty years. Yeah, all right, all right. As an artist. So my top five influences for it's not in any order for my for my producer side. Uh-huh. DJ Premier. Oh, Manny uh, Fresh, you know your shit. Mm-hmm. DJ mm-hmm. Premier, Manny Fresh, Q-Tip, um, Swiss Beats. Who's my and, and Yay, Yay. No one, I don't, no one. Niggas can't take that producer shit from Yay, bro. No one can say. He's still no doing one can it. Like Yay. Yeah, and he's still doing it, bro. Mm-hmm. That Don, that shit. Yes. Like if you just even look at it from production perspective, that shit is crazy. Mm-hmm. It is nuts. This nigga be sampling. Oh, crazy. Travis Scott. I love Travis Scott. Man. Travis Scott's Travis. producer. He changed shit. He took that shit to another level. Mm-hmm. Artists right now. There's a lot of hot people out right now. I ain't gonna lie to you. Well, who you be listening to on a daily? Who I listen to on a daily? Yeah. Uh, Davies. I love Davies. Oh, you listen to Davies? I listen to Davies. Um, you like bars. I like bars, but I do like my little fun boom back stuff. Yeah. You know, I listen to Lil Uzi Vert a lot. Uh, nigga. <laughs> I listen to X every day. I'm my watch. nigga. I listen to X every day, right? X. And that's not DMX, folks. No, X is X. You feel me? And he's about to drop some shit on Friday. I hope it's a tape. No, he's taking Vice City and putting it on the stream. Yeah, that is. Oh, for real? Yeah, X does. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, I just heard it. he was dropping. I ain't know no, it was just some people. He's he he taking Vice City and putting it on stream. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so who else, bro? Um, who out right now? Who else do I listen to every day? Uh, I listen to Dirk every day. Okay. Um, I'll take this wrong. I I'm not really that big on me. I'm here, man. Mm. I listened to Meek when he came up. Meek was harder when he came up. I'm a Flamers Meek fan. Once Meek got paid, I'm a Flamers Meek fan. Um, I really. Well, I can't let you. Know. I really. That's a little. We'll pin the conversation, but I can't we'll, let y'all do we'll, that to Meek. We'll, 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 we'll bring it back. We'll bring it back. That's a pin. That's what a pin is for. That's what a pin is for. Okay. We're gonna bring it back. I mean, I don't. I really have an open variety of people I listen to. I really don't just listen to a specific group of people. Yeah, like we go to my playlist. My playlist is a thousand songs, and it just keeps growing. I you a like, future? You fucking future? I like future. 
Um, that ad, but more so, I'm starting to listen to like a lot, a lot less of the that. mainstream stuff. You would never find somebody that don't fuck with. I know, but I'm about to stop. Yeah. Listen, I'm start listening to a lot of the underground stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. the people that start need, need the publicity, not the people right. that already got the money. You're right, You're right. and I, I respect that. Don't recycle one. the money to the rich people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, give it to the streets. Right, give right, it to the streets. Exactly. So, um, what well, you know, a couple of things I'm gonna say to you, brother. Did you change your phone? You changed your phone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, my, I, it was your question? Do you know we finished his father? It was your question? I don't know. Man, people I listen to that's like not mainstream. My man Adonis, my man Santino. Uh, I listen to Tentrell. I listen to Yale. Like it's, these are local people. I'm naming like these people are some. They they the not they the next hot wave, bro. Like them people. Yeah. I really fuck with them. A lot of people I met at the Jersey Showcase. Yeah. There's a lot of new hot artists that people are not tapped into. So and, I, and I like love being a part of like this yeah, somewhat yeah. of a renaissance. He's just coming. Yeah. He's just coming. So, all right, I'm gonna ask y'all a question. Have y'all listened to the new NBA Young Boy? Uh, you heard the project. I heard the project from him and uh, I heard the project from him and uh, Birdman. It was all right. I didn't hear that one. I heard the new Birdman. Really be rapping on that shit? <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna speak on it. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like he got verses. Uh, to be honest, yeah. I mean, other than like, like he actually got like young boy do a verse, Birdman do a verse, the type of shit. It's like they did an album it's, it's, together. I mean, it's it's heavy. It's heavy, heavy young boy. It's heavy young boy, but Birdman is there. You know how Birdman yeah. is there. Feel, so rap, I got, feel rap. Yeah, I got a different respect for Birdman because I watched this nigga's documentary. This nigga came up. This nigga been getting money since like '91, bro. Like, oh, bro. Man. I, ain't got I was here to talk about younger number, man. You gotta respect Birdman. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you ain't gotta go into a Birdman no, school. That's why I mean it. I don't. I don't got nothing to say bad about Birdman. No, I don't got nothing to say bad. Yeah, I don't got nothing to say bad about him. Cause I, I want you to if you watch this documentary, you're like, yo, this nigga don't care about this rap shit. This nigga was getting mad money in like 1991. Like this nigga had Ferraris and shit in 91. Like, so how? What are we he just did the rap shit to get out the streets. He a real nigga, bro. And they got niggas on the documentary that vouch for this nigga. Like, they got, like, this nigga's grandpa and shit. Like, yeah, Birdman Bird pulled up on me with 10,000 when he was, like, 11 years old. You ain't got to be a rapper to be on a song anymore nowadays. Yeah. Like, Kevin Hart dropping albums. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Hart dropping Anybody albums. gonna upload some shit to my fucking tune core and shit. <laughs> All I meant to say about the young boy shit was, you know, he got a lot of great production, but... I'm an old nigga now. I can tell. Because when I hear the, him rapping on them beautiful ass beats, it's, 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 it's not what I want to hear. And I'm old. I, I can admit that. I could be like, yo, is a, you you doing what you need to do for the group that you needed to do it for. Right. But as a nigga that's 31, bro, I can't. I, 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 I don't. Nah. Mm. Not the raps. Not the raps. The, the production and the maybe even the hook were even you know making a little bop, but the rapping, you saying shit, but the way you doing it on this beat is just like I don't. I'm an old ass nigga right now. I, I accept that, and I heard a little bit of young boy, and I respect what he's doing. Like, yeah, that's all I can say. Is that I get it. Yeah, like, it's not and, for me. And I, can, I, I respect that it's he really can me. rap. It's not. But for like me. nigga, I'm not gonna be riding around my car listening to NBA young nah, boy. Nah. I'm nah, old he get the last, he get the last minute. And the, I'm saying I'm old as fuck when I'm only 34. But his production is tough, fuck, bro. Yeah. Like, like the way the songs come in, it's like he's spitting too. He's saying shit. It's not like he's not saying shit when he rap, bro. It's just not how I. So you big on? Oh, well, we got a guy saying yeah, yeah, yeah. You big on Young Boy? Ab Young Boy? I'm not that big on him. He does make good music. Yeah, yeah. That's how that's how I said like I, I can respect does, it. Like he's not making no bullshit. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. I mean, I like a few songs from him, but it's not nothing I really spend heavy. It's not against him, it's just So you're daily, yeah, every day. Who do you think you listen to the most daily? New niggas? Uh aside from me. Yeah. Um aside, new niggas aside, I listen to not, yeah, including new niggas. I listen to a lot of. Right now, I listen to a lot of Gunner. D, that, 
Mm-hmm. I'm gonna listen to it. It's alright. I fuck with it. I mean, it ain't his best shit, but it's, it's decent. He carrying it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm feel me? Um, you ain't no kind of nigga. <laughs> no? Why are you talking to me? What all I right, did? Right, you see yeah. my face? Yeah. Listen, man, listen, man. I fuck with Gunner. Gunner Smooth. Um, but a recipe for my nigga K. Schwan. Because that nigga believed in Gunner. He loved some Gunner now. I'm now. just trying to tell niggas. When I first, when them niggas first came around, nigga, I was saying this. Gunner was baby, better than Baby. He said he got the smoothest flow. He that was my stat. I was like, Gunner was better than Baby. But I was listening to Mad Gunner. And then I was around some motherfucking thought bitches. And all the thought bitches loved Gunner. I listen to Frank Ocean. Sure. Frank Ocean? I love Frank Ocean. I fuck with Frank Ocean. He got some new shit? Mm-mm. I you just, just love some old Frank, Frank Ocean. Yeah. Old Frankie. Fuck with the old uh, Frankie. I'm spinning, I'm spinning some Chief. A lot of Chief recently. Um, he got new shit? Chief, Chief dropped Chief got new shit. shit? Yeah. I don't like Chief, it. Chief dropped area Like, for real, for Chief dropped every other month. <laughs> he got some little army man shit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's decent. I don't like it's, that. You know who I'll decent. be listening to all the time? Duke Deuce. Ah, Duke Deuce got the energy. Yeah, he gave me the crunk vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Word. He gave me like that Word. old three Word. Word. Yeah. Word. ATL vibe. That's what I've been listening to. I was just a mad Duke Deuce, mm-hmm. bro. I'm gonna play some shit for y'all. Like, Yo, this shit hard as fuck. But, um, shit, we got the homie B Bruiser in the building. Well, what else I wanted to ask you was. How long have you been moving around with like shows and motherfucking going to studios and like industry shit? I did my first show back in July. That was your first show? So you ain't even I, have the experience I, I, of like yeah, taking but, promoters yeah, and all that shit yeah, yet? Yeah, but in the, like the first six months of it, I didn't already did a show in Atlanta. Okay. I did a show in Atlanta. Um, it's not like I did a show for. I did a few shows. So you ain't got like no janky promoter mm-hmm. fucking I've been, experience I've yet? Been, uh, like, or like niggas trying to give you fake promo type no, shit? No, I haven't gone through that yet. All right, it's, so when, when... I'm trying I'm, to make it more organic. Yeah, oh, no, I'm just going to put the light... I'm just going to put your motherfucking... Your antennas up. So niggas is coming, bro. Once you, yeah, I see a lot of them on Instagram. Little yeah, janky, little janky but man. Even like the niggas like that you even think is official, bro. I've just been through the ringer, bro. I'm in no for me, if I'm gonna meet a per- if I'm gonna meet a promoter or something, yeah. it's gonna be in person. Now, even if you meet it from in person, like niggas be like, bro, the, you just started. The, you said you only like your first year, basically. You still like on your first year, kind of going into yeah, your second. But this is gonna be my, my first like year, like artist wise. You gonna that your eyes yeah, gonna open up, bro. Coming. You gonna realize how much of this shit is mm-hmm. bullshit, Mixed bro. Coming, album coming, all that. All these showcases and shit. But that's the next question I was going to get into. I don't want you to tell me a story about some bullshit you want to do with as moving around in the industry, but you got shit to come. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a story about what I did. I'm just going to just put it out. And like, the first part, I do got that. I are you, are you got a story? Yeah. All right, about so some bullshit that went down with this music shit? Yeah, it was a, it was actually a show I did. Um, I forget the name of the show. But I went to the show. It was like... 30 other performers or whatever. Mm. Two judges. Shit. You got to open up for somebody? No, I. It's the, it wasn't open. It was like a showcase. You know, oh, basically. Okay. He was just going there mm. for like an opportunity. You want a distribution deal or some bullshit? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But the whole part of it was you paid to perform. Mm-hmm. To do to perform in front of them, but it was only two judges for 30 people. Mm. So how are you going to rightly judge 30 people equally? Just only two judges. Mm-hmm. Like on my scorecard, the, the, you can the, the bias changed completely. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it was definitely some industry industry shit because people that didn't have, probably had the best promotion, mm-hmm. they didn't have the best songs. People were just from the results. I don't. Right. People, you can hear the crowd. People was like, "Damn, I didn't even make crap top five, top six, none of that." And it's thirty motherfuckers. That's and it's thirty motherfuckers. And like y'all made the top five, top six. And y'all kind of just picked who y'all knew. Right, right. right. And so what, what did you learn from coming out of that? Like once you, once you realize, you know what I'm saying, like these motherfuckers got it in. Not, not even so much once they got it in, but once you realize that you needed to have like. You got to be more aware of what, this what market. What did you learn from that? Like, because people are making money off of people's dreams of trying to make it as an artist. 
Like these showcases are raking in a, a lot of money. That's what that And they will is. probably give you zero to no result on it. And, but they're making a lot of money from it. My man put me up on game with that. Uh-huh. That's all we throw our own showcases. Mm-hmm. Come on, perform where we at. You know, don't go where, you know. One thing about showcases is that it proves people who really want to be artists because getting up on stage ain't easy. Motherfuckers just think that it's just like that simple. You just go up there with a mic and all that, but you know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody who will get on the stage, whether it's, you know, that's the hardest part. That's the hardest part. The hardest part is actually getting on the stage. Mm -hmm. But after you get off of it for the first time, getting on it the second time is just going to be that much easier. It's literally like. It's literally going through emotions. It's just like making a lifestyle change. Right. right. So you said this is your first year. So what do you, what, is there anything that you want to take from this first year's experience that you really are like, this is what I did in this time? And if not, is there anything further along the line that you have planned that you want to just take from this whole artistry path that you're taking right now? You got to make time for what you want to do. That's what I want. You got to make the time. Even though when it seems like there's no time, make the time. Right. That's a fact. So, you got B Bruiser out here moving around. He got the new single. You know what I'm saying? Dark Bop. You know what I mean? And uh, what do you want to, uh, what are your goals for 2022? What are you trying to get done this year, bro? 2022. Uh, one, well, at least my album. Sure. My album is going to be masterpiece how much is how far along is that coming my album that's been a production i've been working on for years now like the okay. beats and all that stuff i've been working on that for years you gonna produce your whole album yourself and produce the whole album that's what's up but then i'm gonna shoot a short film too man. that's dope that's dope as shit kind of like what kanye did one of his albums i'm gonna do that okay. type that but it's gonna be one long extended music video it's gonna mm-hmm. be the name of the album mm-hmm. but that's so do you have an inspiration that you draw from for that? Because when you think about those kind of things, this albums that I've heard before that like, I feel like they should have a video version of it. You know what I'm saying? There's certain albums that I feel like I should be able to see a visual version of it because mm-hmm. the album visual is album. There's people, that, that's you, a new wave too. A lot of, there's mm-hmm. gonna be some visual albums we draw. Do you feel like with this project, it's gonna come together as a cohesive thing or do you feel like it's just like a collection of, you know what I'm saying, your artistry? Because some things are you just, the it's album one project is right, one. so the album's called 95. Mm-hmm. That 95 is basically going to be an introduction. It's going to be my introduction into the music industry. So it's going to, what better way to introduce myself than to tell you my story. For sure. So 95 is going to be, well, my perspective on the way my story played out. It's not going to be 100% accurate because there's going to be some different perspective. You know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. The whole point of the album is, this is going to be a mis un- understanding misunderstanding. Mm. That's the best way I can put it. Okay. An understanding. You can understand why he was misunderstood. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. So, um, right now we're about to get into our next segment. We got the homie Beat Boozer in the building. Keep telling him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He got the new single, you know what I'm saying? Dark Bop. Dark, it's Dark Bop? Dark Bop. Dark Bop. Dark Bop. Dark Bop. You, know, you can find it on all your motherfucking streaming mm-hmm. platforms. You feel me? And, uh, Hashtag Mad Memory. Hash, I mean. And uh, we got to get into our, our, our most famous segment. You feel me? Oh, our most famous? Uh, yeah. All right. Who's we'll Spark it? I'll Spark it. it. You guys know what I'm doing? Nah, go ahead. Spark it, man. I'll Spark it. And uh, <clears throat> it's called... Uh, it's the time you've been waiting. It's the time you've been waiting. It's Bobby out of here with Rugged and Free. Yeah! Goddamn right. Let's fuck out of here. Let's stick with a black music. I can tell somebody at least once a week, like, if not oh, once a day. Motherfucking chillers. They gonna kill us both. I'm tired of these motherfuckers out here with these bullshit. You know what I'm saying? What do you want to let them know? Nah, I gotta fuck out of here this week. It's for these motherfuckers that be like talking about like LeBron and Tom Brady and all these niggas. Mm-hmm. But these niggas is soft. These niggas is pussy. Oh, like, nah, nah, I'm saying that's how niggas be coming to like, y'all niggas be talking about athletes. Niggas be talking about motherfucking artists. Niggas that talk about motherfucking Daisy like he ass. 
like he ain't do 25 albums and shit. Or like, like bro, but like at the end of the day, we all humans. Like, nigga, what the fuck did you do that you can sit around and talk about this man crazy? Yo, niggas talk about professional athletes. Niggas talk about LeBron with the chest out. Like, this nigga's a bitch. I swear to God. Never been tough as LeBron. Like, like bro, you <laughs> got to get LeBron will beat you. You ever had a chance? LeBron beat you the fuck up. You ever had a chance? To nah, it's just that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's cool. We got fandom. You know what I'm saying? It's cool every now and then. But some it. niggas take this shit too far. I get it. Like, yo, LeBron, I'll fuck you up. Serious, yeah. yeah, like, bro, you know what this nigga really go through? Like, bro, you will never make it in the league. You'll never be off the benches, bench, my nigga. Like, the bat, the assest nigga on the bench will dunk on you, my nigga. Yeah. It's like, it's okay, you know what I'm saying? We fans, we talk our shit. But some niggas, some oh, niggas, they, they, they're like, bro, I, I spit in this mama's face, <laughs> nigga. Fuck this talking nigga. Filthy. You're talking filthy. I just want to say fuck out of here. Niggas are just because talking it's filthy. so easy to talk to someone that's not supposed to respond. They're like, yo, boy, like, bro, what do you do, bro? You work at Burger King. That's some real shit. But you talking right crazy as fuck about these, or even talk about anybody. Like, because anybody even that, when they do something, they know they're in a the light, and yeah. they can easily flip that back on them. They don't yeah. to demean or downside someone else. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what they there for, for us to, I guess, for us to judge. They get paid for niggas to judge them. But, like, some niggas just got, I just want some niggas just to know, like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. You can't go that hard. Some niggas, it's, not it's, it's too much. It's too much. That's my fuck out of here, though. Um, what I'm going to get the fuck out of here this week is people who believe that happiness is found other than anything within yourself. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like, mm. the only real reality is that to be happy is to do shit that make you happy. So if you like to smoke weed and your parents don't like you smoke weed, you probably shouldn't be around your parents. If you mm. feel like you happy yeah. enough to... You know what I'm saying? If the shit that make you happy is you got I holes in your socks. If you feel like you need to be happy and have holes in your socks, and you lived your full life, I ain't talking to kids. I ain't talking to kids. I'm talking to grown, full body adults. They take care of yourself. Grown ass people. The only thing you need to do to remain happy to me is feel like you do things that make you happy. So if you feel like you got to hustle six hours out of the day and go do what you got to do, mm-hmm. and your bitch tripping, out them days, mm-hmm. you don't need to be around that bitch because you need to be involved with a person who understands that's trying to hustle the same six hours. Mm-hmm. Now, if you meet a bitch who like to smoke weed on the couch and you like to smoke weed on the couch, let's smoke weed on the couch together. But one thing I'm telling my adult people is realize that it's on you. It's up to you. You up to yourself to make you happy. When people say shit like, I'm not happy because of my baby dad. I'm not happy because of my mom. I'm not happy because of my kid. I'm not... You fucked yourself over in the beginning because you wasn't taking yourself first. And if you don't put yourself first, you fucked in the jump. And I learned that the hard way. Mm. From years, these last couple years I lived my life, you feel me? It's nothing more I want than my family. Mm. But I don't got it. And I probably won't have it Mm. because of the decisions I made. Because I wasn't putting myself first. Mm. You feel me? Mm. If you don't do that shit, bro, you're done. So fuck out of here people that believe that you need other people's opinion, you need other people's point of view, you need other... Bro, it's your life. Take that shit by the balls and do something with it. Mm. That's, that's what we're going to do. That's real, that's real shit. Yeah. And we always offer a motherfucking opportunity for our guests. If you got anything, that anybody you want to get the fuck out of here, or any concept or anything, if you want to get, get the fuck out of here, you know what I'm oh, saying? Shit, I'm all we got. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, do you, Vlad? Do you? Um, let me see. Who do I want to get the fuck out of here? Hmm. I got one. Mm-hmm. All right. So, get the fuck out of here out of the week is uh, the Me Too movement. Mm-hmm. Controversy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Like, do tell. No, no, what I was saying was, I was watching a video on it. It was like an older video, but it was his first. Do I want to do the Me Too movement? No, oh, actually, no. let me do cancer. <laughs> oh, no. Let's let's not get me into some trouble. <laughs> yeah, the dark oh, right, right, right. Let's, right, let's not go there. <laughs> Alright, so let's go with the what did I just say? You said the Me Too movement. No, not the Me Too movement. Uh the cancel culture. Okay, cancel culture. All yeah, right. I, I don't like people I don't like the whole idea of cancel culture. 
Because I was thinking about, I was actually talking about this at work. Mm-hmm. It's like, cancel, you can't, like with the comedians, like mm-hmm. Dave Chappelle and how they try to cancel them. And how to also influence this music, like the baby and mm-hmm. whoever else they try to cancel this past year. Yeah. Right. You don't have to listen to them. Right. Don't like stop someone's don't stop someone's income because you don't like that shit. Right. If you don't like it, nigga, your dial goes left and your dial goes right. Oh, for sure. You don't gotta listen to it. You gotta be. You have to mind, literally mind your fucking business. Mm-hmm. Like the, the the negative energy you put out to the universe gets reflected onto itself. That's a fact. That's a fact. So as long as you're gonna be putting negativity into the universe, it's, you're always gonna be a negative person. Be Had to learn that the hard way. That's part of my fuck out of here because I learned that myself. And that's you walk around all mad and shit. Niggas be mad and all that. Man, bitch, I'm yeah, laughing. Bitch, you mad? Yeah, ping pong off of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, like happiness. You gotta find that from within. Yeah, it's, it's no other way. That's a fact. Yeah. But it also kind of, people. Are, you know, you don't ever know. You literally never know what the next person is going through. Mm-hmm. So That's you true. gotta, you gotta carry it with grace. Exactly, you gotta uh, class. You know, we. Are, I, I come from a family where I was fortunate enough to meet my great grandmother and live with her. Fuck, meet her. I, like, I, that's a woman in my life. You feel me? I remember her. I remember living with her. You feel me? So it's like you gotta carry that shit with class and grace and toughness and all of that, and be able to be able to take the punches. Cause you gonna get punched. You gonna punch back though. Uh, that's the bottom line. You feel me? Like. That shit that you go through when you feel like it's just you, that's a punch, bro. And it's it's it, it hurt. But bitch, is you gonna get up or you gonna lay on the canvas? And that's what life is about. Niggas that's gonna lay on the canvas and niggas. Them punches gonna are not gonna stop. So, nah, so never, it's, they never stop. No, nope, it's either lay down and get pu- yeah, fucked yeah, up, bitch. or it's either you beat this nigga the fuck up and get past him. Right, and get right. ready to fight the next one. And if you ain't gonna beat him up, fight enough to where you can stand up and get through. Mm. Nigga, like it be some motherfuckers you might not get you probably could this motherfucker you could probably win one out of every five times with. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not a good percentage. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you fighting every time, and you know you can get up and go do what you got to do, fight, nigga. Because when you win, that's your opportunity to do something great. Well, to put a button on what B. Bruiser said, I feel as though to be even, to even be, to have the privilege of being offended, nigga, you got to have some money. And I feel as like, though I'm too broke to be fucking offended. So, <laughs> fuck them niggas anyway. Right. <laughs> Like, nigga, I, don't, nigga, I ain't ever had enough money to be offended. Make some noise for uh, that. Not by no shit on some TV. Like, you be offended by on uh, some personal shit, but like, not yeah, by Yeah, but nigga, do something like, to you, your Like, you life. saw Dave Chappelle yeah. saying, fuck, and you saw Dave Chappelle saying some shit. Like, nigga, I ain't got enough money to be first offended of all, by a biggest were, nigga. First of all, he got when you were young, Eddie Murphy was saying all kinds of wild shit. Oh, yeah, for sure. Eddie Murphy that was wasn't when I was young. That was before I was born. <laughs> right. right. I'm yeah. talking about the people, like, the people that easily yeah. get the older white. Yeah. Oh, well, they saw they, my boys. Ben talked. He was probably at all the Richard Pryor. All the, they was all talking. Crazy. Crazy. Giving it up. Stupid. Crazy. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's Urgent a good thing. Back, all that. Yeah. But yeah. now that we're in this era of media, everyone has a something to like, say. They don't got nothing better to do. They don't have anything. Not even that. It's just some people just don't need to be on social media. For sure. For sure. Some people just don't need to be in so there are some people that shouldn't be able to speak their mind 24 hours. Social media is some treacherous streets to be watching. Do you think I'm at, I'm at, we're going to leave it with this? We're going to end OTS on this, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, I still got to do a little motherfucking segment. Uh, one more segment, but you can do your question. We're going to end this segment on this, uh, uh, and we'll get into okay, the oh, music. Shit. No, okay. I apologize. I said it wrong. Damn, what was I was, uh, do you think that, um, damn, what the fuck was I just talking about? Uh, cancer culture and shit. Do you think, I don't know, forgot the fucking question. Well, if you fix it back up. <laughs> I had a good one just now. Too. My fault. But all right. Full so <laughs> we in here with the homie beat bruiser, you know what I'm saying? Rapper producer extraordinary. I mean, he been going through his first year of the game. I mean, he's new on the block, but he he making noise and it's shit hard. Um I wanna talk about your first album, your goals for your first album. If you had everything your way, if you had your fucking dream Fucking first album, bro. Uh, that's the second. That's what the segment is. Um, who would you get to produce it besides yourself? 
if you got one producer to produce your first project, to team up with you, y'all can collab. Alright, we can come back to that. No, 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 no. I got an answer. It's just right. ask Find it. One person. Perfect match. Y'all merit is a pet match being head. X. X, like Eric Sassi? Yeah. He produced it? Yeah, bro, you didn't know? I figured. The nigga was doing everything. Yeah, it was a, he played piano. He played yeah. Oh, shit. All right, so you got SXX Stasi on producer. What label you, you want to get with that you think it pro that your best fit with to promote you? Even if you go independent, you do 50 50 joint venture or whatever. The best one? Yeah, that's fit what you think that you got going for your career. Um, what label is that first album coming out of? Atlantic Records. Atlantic? You fucking with Atlantic? I like Atlantic Records. Alright. I do. Like, there's no specific. There's no specific, no. Crew, like, no, Greenville, I, no. RP. No, I just like the history. All the other niggas. <laughs> no, it's just I like the history of the. A lot of the. How, if I do all the research, a lot of the music I like, listen from comes from either Atlantic or indie people. Okay. Alright. Alright, you got one R&B feature to do a hook or whatever on your, on your album. Who you getting? R&B. Or, yeah, somebody do a hook. It don't even have to be R&B. But you got one person to do a hook for you. Anybody, industry, past, present, whatever. That's alive at any minute. Who you getting on a hook? Miguel. Mm, that's decent. That's decent. Yeah. All right. You got to do one song. With no hook, when y'all just run the shit out of the beat, you gotta get two rappers to go on the track with you to, to run the shit out of the beat before your album. Like, y'all just straight giving them bars or your, your best flows or whatever. Who you getting to rock with you? Two, two artists. Two artists? Yeah. Unlimited hmm. budget. Unlimited budget. you think best fits for you like I, I everyone like even indie people industry yeah people. even anybody it could be your man um, it don't matter yeah my man's blue you know news. Who is. my man's blue news from Camden mm -hmm. and uh, if I had to pick one industry person mm -hmm. no hook no hook y'all just go on a, a hard ass beat and just run love folk Love Fo. Love Fo. Damn, why listen to Love Fo? Love Fo. He's still dropping new shit? Yeah. Love Fo, he, he, that's, he, that's no hook king for real, for real. Damn, why his songs is just no hook. He just, bah, 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 bah. I, I, I bang Love Fo like to this day. Like 16, 2000. No, I bang Love Fo to this day. Yeah, he was hard. My favorite song he got out right now, it was from his recent project. It was this joint he dropped with Dirk called uh, Composure. Damn. That joint was hard. I ain't even know he was still yeah, listening to the music. I mean, I know he's still making music, mm -hmm. but um, all right. So you got your album, all that shit, and you got a tour. You got you got a tour the album. You got to pick two artists to go on tour with that you think that y'all do a decent show together. A decent that show that bring the tickets out and all that shit that you fit with. That I fit with. Yeah. Who would you do? I mean, who would you go on tour with? Just two artists. Yeah, you and two other artists. Me. Dave Knox. Mm -hmm. Me, Dave Knox, and my homie. Alright. Out of all the industry? You can get anything. If I can get anybody? Yeah, I'm saying anybody that you think that you're going to fit with. You can get fucking I mean, all the. That was the two people I just named, I did my very first show with. Okay. Right. So, and I, the show was great vibes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what, you can look on YouTube and see what any one other person else is going to give you. Mm -hmm. But it's actually starting some shit with somebody, mm -hmm. actually watching it progress and then bringing it to other people on a, 
on a on a tour, mm-hmm. it's never gonna get no better than that. Do you, do you think that. that? Do you think that being with the person that you know more, as opposed to a person that's more talented, what you think is more valuable? What I learned early on is talent isn't probably like ten percent of this music stuff. So Fuck yeah, that's a fact. Anybody can have music talent, but not everyone can be talented to be a musician. This music shit is attention based. That too. Ninety percent of your attention. music. Oh, it's not ninety. Most of your music career is marketing. Yeah, that's how you hear all the bogus music on the radio and stuff. They, they know how to market. Yeah, and they got a good ass. They got a bag, or they know somebody that can market for them. Or you just can just stir up enough attention. Yeah, to get people to listen to or watch your stuff. That's some sad shit. When you you realize realize that shit, like damn, well, that anything shit. that gets people to unlock their phone. Mm-hmm. On um, that note, I'm glad you brought it up. If you could do a viral. If you just need to figure out somebody that can help you go viral, anybody on the internet that can help you go viral without, I guess, embarrassing yourself, who would it be? Elite Life KD. What was his name? Elite Life KD. What he do? He do he do funny videos out of ATL, but he from Jersey. Oh okay. Right. That nigga is funny. Right. I love I love funny skits. And if I was to do a skit with anybody, it'd be Elite Life KD. Okay. You gonna rock up? You gonna rock up your segment? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, rock up the job. What's your second? Who, me? Yeah, come on, man. Rapid fire? Rapid fire. Yeah. Oh, we can transition, because I got one more topic before we transition to your second. All right. And then we can finish with the rapid, rapid fire. fire. All right, we're going to make it quick, because we already up on an hour. We're coming up on an hour anyway. Um, I just want to talk about these Instagram uh, comments that I've been reading. Uh-huh. Been reading. <sighs> like, niggas just be commenting on these. Uh, my, my favorite thing to do at work is to go on Instagram model pictures and read the comments that these niggas, niggas to be leaving or like, baby, you get my dick so hard. Like, I will just give you this 13 inch cock. Please, baby. Like, yo, who are you niggas? Like, you think she reading this shit? Like, yo, I'm gonna fuck this nigga. Nah, my favorite ones is, mm-hmm. hey guys, I'm showing my boobs. Click the link in my bio on my live. <laughs> I mean, the little robot bitches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, them girls. Why should it be the niggas that's low in the comments though? Like, they're trying to watch highlights. <laughs> right, right. Hey. But it's just like, bro, stop leaving these comments, bro. What are you like? Y'all beating y'all dick and doing this shit or something? Like, yeah, she's going to read that shit. She's going to know. I don't know. It just fucks me up every time. It's just hilarious. But <laughs> it, 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 it do fuck me up. Cause it's like, bro, like, who is these niggas that's writing this shit? The same people that's making all these females millionaires on, on OnlyFans. That's the same people. Yeah. yeah. But speaking of yeah. IG, uh, IG stocks, I like to refer to them as uh, IG entrepreneurs. Who's your favorite right now? Who you got any good ones? I'm not IG or so. I'm trying to some bitch that you keep seeing every old IG, like, yo, this bitch. They'll, they'll force them on you. I, know. I don't really be on IG, but every time I scroll my timeline, it's a nah, new. I'll be on IG. It's a new man. beautiful woman that I ain't never seen before. So I. You ain't got I no names. Yeah, nah. You ain't I got no Jones. You fucking with IG? You seen this bad as fuck? This is always on your timeline. Nah, my nah. girlfriend gonna kill me. Oh, uh, well, I, <laughs> I do. But John, I don't, honestly, I don't really scroll through IG no more. I don't, the only time I really go through IG is like, for work, know, reels, business, the business shit. Do the reels and just simple shit. Yeah. I don't really like scrolling that much. If I'm on something, I'm on YouTube. I like I like YouTube. YouTube is fun. You learn a bunch of shit on YouTube. You can trick and fall and get some knowledge on YouTube. True. Yeah, I watch YouTube like TV. Fucking mm-hmm. um. Uh, shit. That's all I pretty much got. Before we get into the John, John, get to that rapid fire, wrap this shit up. No. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Um, when you uh got all the money in the world, right? You got a lot of money. You running around. You feel like you getting money. You feel me? You doing your thing. What you gonna do? You got 12, 12 to twenty four hours to spend all the money in the world. What you gonna do with that time and that money? I'm gonna pass it around. Homeless people. Okay. So when you're doing that, right, you got to gotta look good, you know what I'm saying? But before you look good, you got to feel good. So when you ride around, you need an album. It's just one album. 
Nothing else matters but this one album. My last album to play? It's what you Not even your last album. This is your only album on the day you get all the money in the world to spend. You feel me? So, you feeling good. You know what I'm saying? So, it's the, it's the album that you riding around with all the... But you got everything for these 24 hours. And however you spend your bread is up to you. So, you need that album. What that album going to be? And then, you know what I mean, you're riding around, so you're spending your money, you're listening to your music, and now you got to pull up to the mall because you got your fit on, but you ain't really get dressed for the day yet. It was, you know, you know how you had a long night, one night, you feel me, then you ain't get dressed the next day, you got some errands to run, then you run, but when you get to the crib, you got to get dressed, you feel me? You get one pair of sneakers, mad different flavors, what is it going to be? Some okay. Jordans and two different colors of Jordans. Mm. Okay. And I will wear. So I will wear black Nike sweats with a throwback Jason Campbell's jersey on. Mm. And there you have it. Going. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Man, we dig that up. Mm -hmm. Jason Campbell was bull. He's just kind of trash. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. That was fire, ladies and gentlemen. Man, we had the homie B Bruiser in the building. Thank we you. Gonna end up, yeah, I'm talking about I want to come end, back. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. We're going to end with a little. Uh, we're going to play one of your tracks to uh, end this off. Yeah, play Dark Bop. Dark Bop. You're going to play that Dark Bop out now. The music video out now. Yeah, what else? Where can they find you, bro? You can follow me on IG at B Bruiser. They can find me on my Facebook at B Bruiser. Mm -hmm. Twitter at B Bruiser. I'm starting to get back on Twitter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's where you can find me. SoundCloud at B Bruiser. You know, mm -hmm. stay tuned about that. Right. B Bruiser Make sure on, you everything. Stay tuned on everything. B Sing Bruiser on everything. Yep. You feel me? Make sure y'all go subscribe, go like, go click, go comment, go get some love. While you at it, shout out to OTS, shout out to fucking. Chill though, 1002 coming soon. Make sure y'all like and subscribe Shout to the everything. channel, motherfucker. Yeah. Shout out to everybody that got going on. Uh, uh, we appreciate you, bro. We, and we appreciate you coming out, man. For real, bro. bro. We back, you know what I'm saying? We was going for a while. I was drunk, you feel me? He's still drunk. Yeah, I'm still drunk right but now. After this episode, you know, we might have to go to a little. You know what I mean? He's yeah. still drunk. We're going to get it right yeah, now, y'all. We all y'all win it. It's the Chiefs winning. it. I ain't telling you. That's how real it is. I ain't telling you. They won. 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 Nah, <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean, there ain't no point in me doing the rabbit pie if you going to do the motherfucking, you know, nigga, you got another one? I, I keep those, I keep those. We both got our own set of podcasts because this and this and this and this. Yeah, we intertwine it, you can't do that. That's dope. Yeah, like you got different backdrops. Yeah, this is my main. Bro, we trying to get it together. That was some good shit too, bro. Yeah. 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 Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. Good luck. Oh, bro. There's plenty of shit. Come here. Oh, yeah, bro. I'm saying we about to be, we gonna boot it up. Especially once we get our own spot. Like, this is my homie spot, but I'm trying to get my own shit that I can just be there all day. Like, yeah. I can't be here all day, he got other clients. <laughs> That's my man, so, and, and like, we do the rap shit, too. Like, so I was rapping before I did all this. Like, I do everything. Yeah, you see, you know what I'm saying? Get with him, you get with him, you know what I'm saying? Get target shit, and get the signs and all that shit, because he booked. This shit is 8-1 ball. Sound? I'm at the end of going up the deep end. I'm not riding. I'm a free man. Yeah, he won't do this, bro. I feel like fucking five hours. I'm in this business like 2010. It's going hard. I mean, I mean, I mean, that beat in like an hour and a half. 
and you got the food loops because you're just going there and making a beat and you're going to record and shit. Shit, you can go do a live performance shit. You got instruments, all types of shit. I don't know music video. Yo, I shot plenty of shit in here, bro. That's what get one before you leave, so. This shit is hard. I'm just gonna make sure I stop the live. Big Bruiser! OTS Podcast, man. Big Bruiser, fuck with us, bro. Don't fuck with us. I'm gonna bruise my cold since we don't go to see our.